I'm very excited about this one. It's time for the first drive in my brand new Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me on a pretty nice day for it. We're just outside of Chicago here in Illinois. And we've got a few things ahead of us. Firstly, to get over to Ceramic Pro Chicago, the elite dealer who have been installing Ceramic Pro's ultimate armor protection package on the new Schmimobile. Then it's time to take it out for a first drive. And at this point, I've never been at the wheel of a new seventh gen Mustang. The first time I'm driving one is going to be my own into Chicago. And then we're heading over to visit a friend's extraordinary collection, a collection I visited four or five years ago that gave me some inspiration for the Schmuseum. Let's do this. It's an exciting day ahead. While we're waiting for the Uber, which should be here in just a moment, to take us over to the Chicago Car Collective, I should add that the Mustang needs about a thousand miles of its running in process. Now, the good news about that is that we've got around 5,000 miles ahead of us on a big road trip over to SEMA in Las Vegas. I can't wait for this though. We should be picked up in a moment and then we can get on the way. <laughs> It is finally about to be time to drive this thing. But remember we had a decision to make about the appearance pack on the front of the car, the vinyls, the satin vinyls, whether we would leave them be and try and go around, whether we would just remove them and do a white bonnet, a white hood, full PPF, or whether we would go over them. We made the decision, I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but I locked the spec for this car about nine months ago. Fast forward to last week, and we were at Pat Millican Ford in Detroit to collect it, to reveal it to you guys, to take delivery, before we loaded it up into the transporter with Trucker to bring it from Michigan over here to Illinois, where we're now at Ceramic Pro Chicago, the elite dealer who have installed the paint protection film here at the Chicago Car Collective. In fact, we brought the car right in here to the wash bay to get it ready to run it through the preparation processes to start washing over the car to get it ready for PPF to be installed and I'm now looking at it but I want to show you through some of the cars here we're going to go through things in more detail because at the Chicago Car Collective there are some pretty cool things here in storage like the matching pair of V12 Vantages but we'll get to that because check this out the dark horse sitting next to the liquid carbon Ford GT, but this is now the finished look. And my word, does it look amazing. It actually has the walk up proximity. So it knows that we've walked to the car, but come take a look at the result of this. We decided to go over the satin appearance pack and I love it. I love the gloss of that. I love adding unique touches to cars, making it slightly different from all of the other ones, so it's instantly recognizable. The Oxford white paint, but they have managed to PPF the entirety of the car. The Ultimate Armor package gives you the front end high impact protection, but that's been extended to the whole car, and then the iron coating over the top, but even protecting parts like this, the satin gray parts that you have for this aggressive look at the front end, all covered in PPF already for many, many miles on the road ahead. And you guys know how much I like to drive. We've got about 5,000 miles until this is going to be on the show stand at SEMA for Ceramic Pro. This is seriously quite exciting. Of course, it's all been fully cleaned, all fully prepared. It's a slightly strange one for me with one thing back here. Slightly strange to now drive a car out on the road with no plate on it. I'm not used to that because you can't do that in Europe. We've got our temporary plate in the rear window. But yeah, everything, wing, body panels, the whole lot, all prepared, all ready. And in fact, one other thing, because this is really learning. I haven't driven this thing. I don't know about it. One thing I have discovered is that if you unlock it, the way you get this light sequence at the back as well. I hadn't seen that until just now. The way you get the waves from it as it illuminates and wakes up. Sorry, it's probably quite blinding on the camera, but I really, really think that's cool. There are lots and lots of details. This is a first for me. It's been a very long time since the first time I drove a car was in fact my own. And I've not driven a seventh gen Mustang and I don't count driving around the parking lot. So this is gonna be the first. Before we get too much to that, we need to talk about all of this. We're joined by Sam <laughs> from Chicago Car Collector, operator, owner. Organizer. Yes, operator, owner and uh, enthusiast. Man behind, behind the scenes. <laughs> you store cars, you have Ceramic Pro Chicago, yep. you have, I mean, quite a lot going on really. Yeah, we got a lot of few things going on. So basically how this business works is that it's a storage facility with a membership aspect to it. So when you get a spot here, you also receive a membership. You'll get a key card kind of like this one and you'll get 24 hour access to our lounge upstairs 
which uh, we'll show you in a second. Well, we had we had the view from before. It looked yeah, amazing we had from it from there, last video, now. and then um, pe basically people can come hang out in the lounge twenty four seven. We got the golf simulator up there, We've got the full, <laughs> full kitchen, smoking lounge, and. Uh, Coming soon, we'll have some racing sims, so that'll Ooh, be exciting too. Very cool, very yes. cool. And you have some clients with some lovely cars, I have to point out. Yes, love Ruby love, Stone GT3. Love our cars, yep, love the that The V12s one. are cool. So we have a pair of V12s, which are actually owned by the uh, same husband and wife. And so they're <laughs> inverse specs of each other. So we got a Roadster and a Coupe. Uh, this is the matte satin black with a uh, kind of a, a light pink trim. And then that one is uh, the pink metallic color with a set or uh, with the gloss uh, kind of black carbon fiber options there. <laughs> the opposing specs. Yeah. One so. of 333, one of 249, matching. Yep. Love it. I also love this 812 GTS. Yes. The, uh, one of my the favorite sounding cars in the garage for sure. And this spec, Blue Potsy, it's actually the same color of my Lusso that I recently sold. Yeah. And but so this is an interesting one because he got all the carbon fiber options on the interior but none of the carbon fiber on the exterior because he wants to really use the car, take it to the track and really enjoy it. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that's I love that, fun. almost orange leather interior. Yes. Mega DBS, just all sorts of cool cars. And I mean- Super liquid carbon Ford GT. This belongs to a buddy and uh, yeah, he, he, he keeps it here uh, every now and then, and he's got, he's, he's a collector and, you know, just loves this thing. Used to have four, uh, I think three or four uh, old Ford GTs. Okay. Got rid of them to get this one. Yeah, because it's a big ticket price tag on the liquid series. Yeah, liquid they, and then the liquid carbon option is a yeah. big ticket option yeah. as well, yes. <laughs> to go for the full exposed carbon body, there are only 30 of them. Yeah. And um, SVJ we saw before, and the guys are working on a GT3 RS, which I think is also going to SEMA. Yes, that car will be at SEMA 2 uh, with the Rohana booth. That's okay. owned by one of the owners of Rohana. And uh, yeah, we love having that car in here. Just, I mean, that thing is just so crazy just to look at. And um, I love that thing. At yeah. this point, I've never driven one. So I need oh, to Oh, really? I was going to ask you about that, actually. I've also never driven a dark horse. So <laughs> I'm probably going to go take that one yes, off. Yes, I think that's good. <laughs> I didn't realize that I pulled in your dark horse before you even drove it. So I, I, I didn't mean to drive a Shmi mobile before the Shmi drove it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's fun and games. It's looking amazing and it's looking ready to go enjoy. Oh yeah. We'll see you at SEMA. Given we were just speaking about it, we need to hear this. V12. Perfection. In the 812. Of course, standard exhaust. This car's coming forwards and it looks awesome. Now I tell you what, for 5,000 miles, that would be a pretty epic car to do it in. Love that this also has the painted shields, which I think always suit that front engine Ferrari look. And that interior, look at that interior. That's cool, brave spec. Congratulations to the owner of this car. That is a really, really, really cool spec. Very brave, but very, very nice. Oh, the two-tone interior as well with the navy blue. That's really cool. Very, very nice. Daytona seats inspiration here. This means it is dark horse time. I have not spent much time around this. Even things like the front light animations are new because other than a Pat Miller can Ford, I've never spent any time at all with the seventh gen Mustang. We have PPF, by the way, on the door handles and other vulnerable areas as well. Inside, this is where we get the animations on the displays, which look oh so cool. There's a lot of this that I need to learn, the different settings, different screens, different things that you can go through. But once we get to the end of those, I guess we can just wake up the ignition for the moment. Of course, about to experience this for the first time, the Tremec six-speed manual with the blue shift knob in here, which matches with the other blue accents and details that I spec'd on the Recaro sports seats. But I press clutch and brake down of the button. Oh yes, NAV8 and a manual gearbox at this point in time is a pretty rare combo. So let's pull this on outside and go get ready to drive. The first thing that's a little bit unusual is the electronic handbrake, part brake, which you basically press down or pull up to turn off or put on. So it feels a little bit manual, but it's actually electronic anyway. Into reverse, let's go and do this with the leaves falling everywhere, it's that time of year, but first drive on the public road in the Mustang Dark Horse, and this is when there's a car coming towards me super slowly. Okay, they pulled it, so we're good to go. All right, away we go. At the wheel of this thing. 
Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds really good. We're going to head into Chicago for a moment. We will get slightly out of town a little bit later on and go and have some slightly higher speed stuff. But for the moment, we've obviously got to get the running in started. We've only got 17 miles on the dash. This is a brand new car, a brand new car of a brand new model. Lucky enough to own it and drive it. And I tell you what, the short throw on the shifter is really nice. This thing just slides between gears. Oh, and it has auto rev matching. I didn't realize that. I think that's something you can probably turn on and off in the system, in the settings. Because at the moment we're in the default standard normal driving. However, it starts when you've just got it. Just turn it on, the driving modes. I say that, but what do we have here? What can we change? That's normal, sport, and then we've got track mode. And we've got a tunnel. So we've got to be a little bit gentle with the revs, but Oh yes. <laughs> what a start. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. You know what? It's a Mustang. I know you could argue it's just a Mustang. You could also say it's the like flagship current new model Mustang. It's such a cool thing. And with the story of the cars I've owned, the GT500, all the miles we've done with that, with the other Fords that I have in the garage, the Mackie -E GT, the Ford GT, the Focus RS, the Ford Transit Custom MSRT, the whole collection of them all, to now have, that was fun, the downshifts, to now have another Mustang here in the United States, you know, to have this car out here, the American Schmiemobile, and it's about as American as you can get on there. Maybe that would be a big pickup truck, but certainly it's, on point this is a really sporty feel the gearbox is actually really a big part of it you can have the 10 speed auto but for me this had to be the manual but this is a really really solid god oh, that's 3000 rpm <laughs> this is silly silly in a very good way wow right let's get on to the uh freeway with the skyline in front of us that's actually an insane view that is an insane view right now i need to get out of this lane somehow but i'm a little bit trapped let me squeeze it through here there we go we've managed just <laughs> god look at that look how cool that is right that's where we're heading let's make some progress and head into town We've now arrived at a little bit of a traffic jam, which is when you don't want to have a manual, but it gives me an opportunity to press some buttons. On the main central screen, we have Android Auto, obviously very, very helpful, but it's also super simple to find different things. So if you want to, for example, find the rev matching, I think that's going to be in one of these screens, maybe. There are some of our basic settings. We have vehicle settings. Yeah, rev matching. Rear occupant alert. That's the one in the Mackie I need to turn off because it's super frustrating. Um, I'm gonna have lots of fun going through all of this, to be honest, uh, and learning it all. But also on the steering wheel, as well as your driving modes, you also have the button for your steering. So you can change your steering between normal, comfort, and sport, independently of your other settings. So there's a lot that we can play with here, plus the custom setting, plus the different displays. All meanwhile, I'm driving this car for the first time. And yes, for a road trip, arguably an auto might be a little bit more relaxing, but when you get to the track or when you get to somewhere where you actually want to drive, you have to do the manual. And to me, I said this before, it was kind of like there isn't a choice. If there's still a car you can buy with a naturally aspirated V8 and a manual shifter, you have to buy it. Like, like there's, you can't choose to have the automatic when this is an option because this won't be an option in not very long on a brand new car. You just won't be able to spec this configuration. I think that's Navy Pier over there. Uh, where kind of goes out onto Lake Michigan towards the arena or whatever it is at the very end of that. So we'll just kind of put up a little bit with the traffic jam here and make our way around and be tourists for a few minutes in the city of Chicago. This is kind of cool. The Chicago River runs underneath us. So all the skyscrapers around and I'm very much being full tourist mode right now. Although I tell you one thing you do notice driving this is that the front tires are 305 section seriously wide and you feel it they are very very grabby they want to pull you around a lot those rev match downshifts are amazing obviously you can do it yourself but 
I just quite like that it happens all the time, even on normal driving around town, not worrying or thinking about anything. I don't really know where I am or where we're going. Just basically exploring at the moment. We'll see where we end up. We're definitely not allowed to stop here, but the view of the skyline from the pier is pretty freaking mega. I love that. This is crazy. Just being here, it's a long way from home. The poor old lady was just getting out of that car and they all started shouting at her, the people who were sitting down, and she was like hobbling along. I did not fancy stopping there, that was aggressive. Um, anyway, we will continue on our little sightseeing tour around this magnificent city. Miraculously, I've pulled over for a few minutes and I haven't been shouted at yet, but we're in front of the Navy Pier, or at least the entrance, I guess, to the Navy Pier, in this beast. And although the sun is no longer out, it was a beautiful morning, um, it is what it is, it's looking pretty good. And while I don't normally spec white cars, we should talk about this, I normally like bright colours. I was looking at all of the different options that were available for this, and it was a funny one. You had race red, like I had on my Focus RS. You had blue ember, the launch colour, vapour blue, grabber blue, some of the other more popular Mustang colours. And I was like, I need something that's a little bit different for me from my normal cars. And there wasn't, I think I would have gone for a yellow if there had been a yellow. There wasn't a yellow I could choose. So it was kind of, well, that's what we're going for. Oxford white, the contrast. White cars are notoriously difficult to photograph because of the contrast. But hey, I think it suits this. I think it actually suits it really well. We should probably jump back on the road before we get kicked out of here. Where we're going right now is kind of funny. On the cars nav, just to show you this, that is the Chicago Beam, which is quite fun that they actually have that. But also nearer than that here, is the start of the legendary Route 66. So where we're heading right now is to the very beginning of Route 66, which goes from here in central Chicago to Santa Monica Pier in California, Los Angeles. So a whole long way away. But I wanna see if I can get a photo of this somehow next to the start sign, because I know one day I'll get it towards the end. And that's quite fun. As we go around this corner onto, I guess what is a one-way street, yes, this, as you can see from the sign there, is the beginning of the historic Route 66. And I'm going to pull in for a second. I'd have loved to have parked where the police car was parked. I'm sure the sign used to be on that side, on that heavily stickered up lamppost. And it's now been moved to the side that I've pulled over on, which is a bit of a surprise. But hey, let me see if I can just stop here for a second and then run out and grab a photo because, hey, we're not going to be here often. The fun thing about driving here is childhood memories of burnout and driving cars very quickly under here and um, <laughs> the challenge to not hit the uprights. I bet if we had a fully running engine and I gave it some in here, it would sound really cool. But where we're gonna go now is another actual blast from the childhood gaming past down towards the old airport that is no more, Northerly Island. How about this for a view? The Chicago city skyline from what used to be an airfield. This was Meg's field and on Flight Simulator, this was the runway, you would start here, fly off and go fly through the city and go around the skyscrapers. But of course, it's now been changed into a visitor park and area. We've got the marina here. That is Soldier Field, the Chicago Bears Stadium, and obviously all of the skyscrapers of the city over that away behind the Mustang Dark Horse. And it is still completely unnatural to me to not have a rear plate. I genuinely can't believe I'm not gonna get pulled over for that. It feels wrong, but I swear this says that's what you're supposed to do. Stick in the left side of the rear window, and that's good for two months. That is the Michigan temporary license or tag for the car until the correct one will come through and then we deal with working out how to get that actually onto it but for now it is looking amazing and it's really quite fun to be out driving and we haven't even reached our next destination where we're going to be heading with this to go and uh, see some pretty cool stuff later up ahead of us here is a gt500 we're turning off we're going the other way of course the same as the shimmy wheel back at home oh that sounded good the dual clutch gearbox in that thing is just monstrous. And that's one of the reasons why I went for the manual also in here, because it's, I'm spoiled to have that driving experience. This is a completely different take on it. Different generation, do something different. There'll be something like that down the line, I'm sure. Well, we already know there's a GTD down the line, which obviously is even more of a beast than this, but I'm sure the Mustang will also spawn other variants. Um, as we head through the jungle of skyscrapers, that's a really narrow skyscraper in front of us there. Anyway, we're heading 
towards the Iron Gate Motor Condos, which is where I went years ago and where we're going to be going to check out something that you guys are going to enjoy seeing in a moment. We have arrived at our destination. That's pretty cool. What's up? How's it going? Very nice 765 Spider. This is Chicago Motor Cars, which always has some interesting stuff around. And uh, Hamilton Collection are lurking that way as well. More to come on that front. But we are heading in to the Iron Gate Motor Condos, which is a private, secure community of car condos, which is really, really awesome. And also apparently having Halloween prep. So uh, I guess I need to go and buzz a gate and then uh, we'll head through. We've arrived and been chatting for a bit, hence night has fallen. And it is also, would you believe it, now raining on my freshly cleaned dark horse anyway. This is what we've come to see. So come on in here at the RLS 5.9 collection where I came to visit a few years ago. The cars, the memorabilia, the display, the inspiration in so many ways to the Schmuseum. I mean, I'm standing here right now sandwiched between a Pagani Huayra Roadster and a very cool piece in the form of this Bugatti wheel side table. That's something that I need to take a lesson from. But we're going to have a quick look around because there are some cars in here that stand out. For example, one very bright Porsche 918 Spider. Let me take you on a tour. Let's head in then. The 1930 Lincoln Model L, the Pagani Huayra Roadster, McLaren P1, Porsche Carrera GT, the acid green Visac package 918 Spider, the late 60s Chevrolet Corvette big block, the F40, 05 GT, there's a new Ford GT tucked in, the SL65 Black Series, 300 SL Roadster, the IndyCar up on the wall, all of the different signs and things, and in fact, upstairs on the mezzanine level, model cars, different pieces. This is, this is really the type of environment I wanted to create, and coming out here a few years ago was such an eye-opener in that sense. I actually saw this Wyra Roadster about two and a half, three years ago or so. One of a hundred Huayra Roadsters, the blue carbon, stunning spec. And in fact, let me show you one detail here. The Tricolore striping, the red, white, and green striping that it has around the door cards is absolutely stunning, beautiful thing. I can't say I know too much about the 1930s Lincolns, but certainly looks the part. One of 375 McLaren P1s in the bright orange, potentially papaya spark paintwork, hybrid McLaren, of course, Carrera GT, absolute legend, naturally aspirated V10, manual gearbox, total icon, one of the greatest cars to drive of all time. Then that car that particular car. I think it's a very well-known example of one of the 918 918 Spiders Visac package. So full carbon options, the blades around the side, a car that I've managed to see a few times over the years. One of its former owners, Mr. Solomon Drin, my friend Alejandro, used to be the owner of this particular example. It's a very, very cool thing in that color. It's become such an iconic color. The Corvettes, again, don't know too much about it. Big block example here, a late uh, second or third debatable generation. We've got a US spec Ferrari F40. A couple of interesting things about the US cars, the black bumpers around the front, the extra lights that it has under the wing just back there. And then the pair of Ford GTs, I absolutely love these things, as you know, one day. And of course, lucky to own one of these as well back in my garage, SL65 Black Series by turbo V12 engine, these arches, ridiculous thing in so many ways, adjustable wing at the back that comes up and lowers. And again, one of my favorites, the 300 SL Roadster is such a pretty thing. And this is quite an unusual specification, the white over black leather, immaculate thing. Have a look inside here. The Roadster had such big upgrades from the gull wings. The gull wings are more famous for their doors, obviously that open upwards, but the Roadster really fixed the rear axle issues that the car had and gave it significantly more power. I think up from low 200s to about 300. So it's a big, big, big step up. Again, a one day thing, a one day thing for me. The thing that makes it even cooler though, is heading upstairs with that view looking down, that view over the cars different bits of memorabilia around as well. Totally unique perspective. I think it was when I was here that I decided that I needed to have a mezzanine at the Schmuseum. I needed to have the opportunity to look down on the cars like this. Something that is so cool, always looks very, very special. Then come back this way into the office room. Look at this. Look at how cool this is. Memorabilia, all of the different model cars, 
cars in the collection currently, some former cars from the collection. This is the kind of stuff I absolutely love. I mean, look here, the different books that are on display. I've been amassing my own collection of different things, but the model engines, different cars, different items that have come with some of the cars that have been owned. Look, there's even a Williams Formula One model lurking on the shelf down here. Then all of the books, just so many cool things. I love this. Signed mug by Valentino Balboni. He is a legend, of course. Yeah, that is cool. But there's something else here, really very special, that we're gonna go and take a look at. We're heading down to the vault from Chicago Motor Cars, something that cameras don't normally see. But come on down with me. Let's go and take a quick look here. Check out this underground bunker of supercars. We're gonna be heading down that way in a moment. The murals though, around the walls, which I actually saw four years ago, they'd just been finished, are breathtaking. The largest automotive murals in North America. Now in here, there are some cars from Chicago Motor Cars, some customer cars being stored. And in fact, the two Aventador SVs and the Diablo are actually from a close friend of mine. But this is just one area, one part of all of this. And when I saw this, when I came to visit back then, I was very inspired to do something similar. And I've spoken about it a few times. We've got two cars from Pursang here, actually. The Bugatti Type 35, the Alfa Romeo 8C beautiful recreations. We've got a little lineup of Porsches, the 964 Turbo, 993. We've got a pair of roof Turbo Rs. And the interesting thing is to see some of the differences and how far the customers actually went with these. Now, if we come over to the other side, this is, this is amazing, Ford GTs. And in fact, I've spoken quite a few times about how one of these one day has to happen. That's my dream spec for it. Yellow with the black stripes looks amazing. But I want to show you this car because this satin silver GT is not ordinary. You might spot from the roof, this is a GTX-1, removable roof section. You can drive this as a convertible open car. The engine, gone is the supercharger, in its place, twin turbocharged, 1200 horsepower, and on HREs. That is a veritable weapon. I need to show you as well right here the Ferrari, 250 GT LWB, rebodied original Ferrari, totally beautiful, amazing thing to see. If we keep coming through all the murals, just look in the background at everything around us. Amazing lineup of Mustangs, different Mustang generations. And I suppose given today I've been driving my dark horse, this is pretty relevant. All of the Cobra cars, really special. On this side, we've got a matching pair of Viper ACRs. These have shot up. I want to point out the Jeff Koons M8 Grand Coupe in the corner, limited edition. That's actually painted. Famous artist uh, translating the artwork onto the BMW. I love this yellow Spiker C8. That's super cool. Over there, the Carrera GTs, one in British Racing Green, one in Speedster Blue next to it. Dakar, AMG GT Black Series, Project One Edition, SVJs, SVs, the colors. What a cool, inspiring space this honestly is. And to be able to bring a camera in and take a look, this is really special. A huge thanks to Chicago Motor Cars. It's time to get back on the road. Nice cold start. It does have quite a weak start. And we're now driving in the rain. And I should point out that we have 305 millimeter wide front tires on this thing um, and it's going to be wet why is it beeping at me it's probably beeping at me to tell me it's wet i wouldn't even be surprised so first time running the wipers in here new car everything working nicely let us head on out and go for the last part of our first drive what a place to come and visit what amazing cars to get to see huge thanks to the RLS 59 collection and also to Chicago Motor Cars for the opportunity to see some of this stuff today. Just absolutely breathtaking. Incredible, amazing, what a stop. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going this way. No, I think I'm going the next way. And um, we'll go and try and be careful with this. It's late, everything is locked up, but we're past the Chicago Motor Cars showroom here. Urus, Drophead, SF90, M2, some pretty cool stuff in there. And we're now in a little bit of a drive, actually with some friends, with a Quattroporte and a V8 Vantage behind me. Not that you can really see them, because we're heading for a bite to eat. And um, I am acutely aware that it is very wet and slippery here. In fact, 
without even going much on the throttle. Yep, rear tires are lighting up. And again, <laughs> no hope, no hope. But let's go. This is the sound of V8s because alongside me, we have the V8 Vantage. Just in front is the Maserati. And of course we have the Dark Horse Mustang V8. I know it's dark, I know it's wet, but still, this is a pretty cool little trio right now for our drive to dinner. It's quite funny having now driven the car in sunshine around town on the highway and in pouring rain. I've got a pretty good overview for my first 88 miles, well, 72 miles, because it started on 16. Now a total of 88 miles on the odometer. A few other things about the car, one of which you only know, of course, at night. Look at the puddle lights under the doors. I like that. The way it fades in and you have the dark horse emblem and when you close it, it actually fades out again as well. Maybe it takes a little bit of time before it does it. I just think that's quite a neat touch. Looks cool, looks smart. Don't forget also, while I am here, that we have in the Cheers by Shmion 50 shop, the new design to go with the introduction of the dark horse to the channel. Seventh generation Mustang, bit of a US nod. We've got the new car in the matching spec, of course, as the Shmimobile. So you can grab those along with hoodies and other things as well at cheers.shmimobile50.com. I'll pop that link down below so you can check those out. I'm sure a lot of you also talking about merch are wondering about Shmoo the Cow. Shmoo the Cow has arrived back in the UK. So stay tuned for the end of the dark horse tour. That's fun, isn't it? The lights and the things that they're getting up to. You don't really see them when you're standing here because it's under the eyebrow. So I can't really see that other than telling something's happening. Shmoo the cow has arrived at home. So you're gonna have to bear with me until we're back home a couple of weeks. I'll give you a heads up when it's going to be. So the Mustang Dark Horse is now ready to rock and roll with this tour. We've got a few more days here in the Chicago area before the big journey starts, the big, big, big journey. And I think as we've done in the past, I wanna share with you a bit more behind the scenes of the whole road trip. So hopefully a full movie of this adventure to come because we're going all the way from Illinois to Florida to Vegas for SEMA. It's a long drive, a lot of stops, a lot of cool things along the way, but also a very, very fast pace. Anyway, I'd like to say a big thanks to the team at Ceramic Pro Chicago, the team, Sam, that you saw earlier at Chicago Car Collective for getting all of this ready to rock and roll. As you can probably tell, I'm tired. We just flew back in from the other side of the country and it's been quite a long day at the end of it. After all, I tell you one other thing, Trofeo RS tires, not as sketchy in the rain as I thought they might be, but many more driving impressions to come as we start to get this more run in. It's gonna happen very quickly with a tour across the country. But yeah, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Make sure to check out the t-shirts and others at cheers.shmion50.com and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.